What's the most underrated AI trend? People have realized that AI can be used as, as therapy, and that could be a good thing, a bad oh, thing, but there's a lot of lonely people in the world, and yeah. people are starting to use AI now to try to find meaningful connections. Again, that could lead to good things, it could lead to bad things. And how can you use AI not to drown in the sea of sameness, but to create a difference uh, you, and stand out? Well, I think it's really important to broaden your knowledge about the classics, about philosophy and, and science, because again, the, the more breadth of knowledge you know, the better you can ask and surface things from the AI. So we find our creatives in WPP that have art history backgrounds or anthropology backgrounds or understand about lighting, aperture and, and camera angles, they're able to ask much better questions, able to refer to some you know, tribal artwork in some corner of humanity that I've never even heard of. So having breadth of knowledge means that you can actually engage with these technologies much more effectively. What's your one unpopular opinion about AI? According to my my definition from the 80s, nobody's doing AI, which is of course ridiculous because everybody's doing AI. But the, most people think that AI is large language models. And the fact is that there are lots of algorithms out there that can drive massive effectiveness in your business. And large language models are just a small portion. That said, they are going to get smarter. And by the end of this decade, it's likely that we'll have a professor in our pocket. What the world look like? beyond that who knows what's the funniest weirdest way you've used AI I use it a lot to engage with my daughters so turning them into Disney princesses and coming that. with stories and things like that so yeah, yeah. today I'm with Daniel Hume and I'm, what do you do I'm the chief AI officer for WPP